help with time, you know. We, we are coming closer and closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, in the last days, things will get tough. Amen. We are heading into days of tribulation. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and I want to say that, uh, uh, you know, as I was thinking and meditating this, this uh, words and as I was reflecting on that, I felt the Lord say that uh, uh, these are times where we need to be not only, hear me well, we need to not only believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, which we all do. We all do, otherwise we don't, we have faith, we are saved, we know and we believe in that. Uh, but these are times where you got to be strong in the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Not just a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, but people who are strong in the spirit. Because what is required for this time is people who's got strength and stamina and, and, and they have a strength in the spirit. And, and uh, I mean, until today, you know, we kind of have, have, uh, have uh, uh, worked you know, it has been good. It has been good days. I mean, relatively good, at least in Australia. You know what I mean? Uh, the poorest man in Australia, uh, 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 the poor, the poorest man is still the richest. The poorest man in Australia is still the richest man in the world. Hallelujah! Either through our economy or through the government, the government takes good care of us. Hallelujah. We are a blessed nation. If you are in Nepal or India or whatever it is, man, you know, you can, uh, uh, we, we have a reasonably good life, li lifestyle and we've been secured and we've been, we've been uh, protected and uh, we've been kind of, you know, good thing, right? We've, we've had shower Yeah, shower take care. But uh, I believe the times that we are coming in, uh, those things are not going to be there. Hallelujah. There's going to be a challenge. Amen. And uh, we just need to be people who are strong in God, strong in the Holy Ghost, to be able to be withstand. And third thing, you know, not only to be able to be able to withstand, but to overcome. Hallelujah. So God has called us to be overcomers. So no matter how tough it is out there, we will be, God will anoint us to overcome the situation. Hallelujah. Uh, to, 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 like uh, uh, Isaac of old, to prosper in a land of famine. Hallelujah. There may be famine in the land, but you don't have to be a victim. Hallelujah. You don't have to go through that. Because God can make you prosper in a land of famine. And there may be trouble in the land, but God could cause you to escape. Hallelujah. Uh, there could be difficulty in the, in the land, but God will open a door for you. Amen. I believe that when people are strong in the spirit, sometimes the circumstances may not change, it may take time to change. But uh, when we are strong in the spirit, God will make a way. Hallelujah. Guys, he made a way for, for the nation of Israel. And they were in front of the Red Sea. You know, if you, you're in front of this Red Sea, you're finished your history. Amen. You're done. You can't go, go backward, you can't come forward, you're stuck, you're, you're, in the, you're, you're, you're caught, you know, you're, you're caught, amen, you're, there's no going back, you can't go back to Egypt, you can't go to the promised land, you're stuck both ways, but God can make a way, and I want uh, each and every one of you to believe God to make a way for you, hallelujah, uh, because we will have our Red Sea moment in this nation, hallelujah. And, uh, and, and for that, for you to be able to do that, you not only have to be a believer who believe that God is good and believe also in the promises of God and God, uh, but you need to be people who are strong in the spirit. Strong in the spirit means that uh, you, 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 you got a, a strength and an ability within you that you're able to overcome. Amen? That you're able to break through, you're able to, and uh, God will help you. Hallelujah. The only reason why we will do it is not because of us, but uh, God and His anointing and His Spirit within us will help us to overcome the challenge. There's going to be many challenges in the world. There are going to be many, many challenges, you know, uh, but God will make a way for you. Will may definitely make a way for you because why you're His children. Amen. And he will he'll, he'll give you light for your path. Amen. It will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Yes. It is, what do you mean? When do you need that? You need that when it's dark. Hallelujah. So when the world grows dark, when everything becomes dark and nothing, for you, the light will shine before you. Hallelujah. You'll be given a pathway. What is the light? The light is 
for a pathway. Hallelujah. A pathway for you to walk on. Hallelujah. You need some light. Everywhere is darkness, but for you, light will arise. In the book of Psalms uh, 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 91, it says that light will arise in your darkness. Amen. So as the world goes into darkness, we as a, a children of God, we do not fear. But, but one thing that the Lord really spoke to me during this season was that, that uh, He will... Uh, 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 we need to be strong in, in our spirit. I mean, what do you, how do you become strong in the spirit? From being strong in the spirit is, you know, making a consecration to God and saying, God, I'm going to live for you. Start with a consecration. Uh, Jesus at the at the at, at Jordan River, that was his consecration. Make a Lord, no matter comes high hell water. Uh, you know, I'm going to live for you, Lord. I made up my mind to follow Jesus. You, that's consecration. There's something in your heart that you do, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and then you know, then then you begin to 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 kind of uh, uh, get strong in God. Hallelujah! It's it's not what you believe, but how strong you are. Amen. The strength. Amen. The, that's why Paul writes and said that the inner man be strengthened. I, I'm just going to. Get a couple of scriptures that I wrote down to share with you, and uh, one of that is that uh, that uh, God has not uh, given us a spirit of fear, uh, but has given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So one of the things that will grip you in these times that is a hate is fear. Amen. That fear is going to come from every direction. It's going to come from your neighbors, what's happening around you. It'll come to you through the media. It'll even come to you through your government. Amen. It'll come from every and, and uh, you know, people, you know, when you turn on the, on the TV, it's all bad news. Amen. But given whatever little faith you have, you know, it kind of leaks out of you because you get bombarded, 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 you know. Sometimes I don't even like to listen to the news anymore because there isn't any good news. And uh, uh, so the enemy speak. That is Goliath. Hallelujah! The Bible says that the uh, uh, says that Goliath came out every day. Amen. Every day he was the news man here. Hallelujah! He was the news media of his day. He came out and made the announcement. You know who is there who can challenge me? You know, and it's like that. The news media is coming out and giving us all the bad news and 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 just puts. Fear in your heart. The more you listen to it, the more fearful you get. And uh, sometimes, you know, you know, I like to listen to 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 to, to the news service because I want to know what's going on. But every time you turn it on, it's always this. You know, it's always negative. There's not. A po I haven't heard any positive news. Amen. I haven't heard any positive news for a very long time. Amen. Uh, but I want to say to you, because we are living in these times, uh, you need to to deal with that. You know, uh, because. Whether you like it or not, uh, what you hear, you become. Amen? What you receive, it will affect you. If you're always listening to negative news uh, 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 that is coming out, then you become fearful. Second thing I want to speak to those of you, sometimes, uh, I don't know, like me, you know, people send me a lot of clips. Anyone receives clips? Yes. Uh, COVID-19 clips. And you know what I mean? I, I, I just want to say, you know, have, a, have a check and a balance on that. Uh, if it is uh, creating fear in you, you know what I mean, deal with that, amen? Uh, because sometimes people, you know, I, I want to say to you that our God is greater than that. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, so, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Outside is fear, okay? I want to say this is that. Outside is fear. What is coming in from the outside is fear. What should be coming in from the inside out should be power, love, and have a sound mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And where, where is that? It is in you already because the Bible says God has given you. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. The devil is trying to give us something, but God has already given us a spirit of power and love and have a sound mind. And I want to say to you, we really need to tap into that. We need to hear God. Amen. We need to get into the word of God. And uh, But be armed with this one. Do not be afraid. Amen. And uh, one of the, uh, uh, and I will talk about different things that we can do with regard to that. But one thing is to, to know, know that the enemy is trying to get to you by creating fear in you, by making you fearful. Hallelujah. Making you fearful. And your friends make you fearful. Everything that the, everything that comes through the news media is fearful, and and uh, and we could we could get uh, fearful for that, and uh, 
uh, they, my people might think, you know, when dogs are trained of a service, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, we can, but, but the, the Bible says very clearly that uh, God has not given us that. And uh, we just, I, and I've written here, choose. Choose not to fear. Choose. Choice. Yes. Choose, you know. You just, uh, whenever you hear that, when you see that, you know, you just speak the opposite of that uh, into your life. Declare. You know, and uh, choose not with a choice, choice, you know, uh, but it is coming in very heavy, very thick, you know, but choose to believe. Uh, can I say this, you know, choose, don't dwell on the negative. Fear comes in when you dwell on the negative, on what's wrong. The more you dwell on that, the more fear will grip your heart. And uh, you really need to to, to, to be reading, seeing things that are negative. Sometimes you got to turn it off, sometimes you got to switch it off, sometimes you got to get away. Uh, even sometimes even from a negative person, amen? Uh, sometimes you got to entertain a negative person, uh, but let them not have a lot of input into your life. Find somebody who's positive, somebody who's happy, somebody who speaks faith, somebody who, who, who will build you up, amen? Somebody uh, or some teaching that will really strengthen you. You really need to do that. You got to take care of number one. No, it's COVID season. Nobody's going to take care of you. Amen? You, if you don't do it, nobody will do it. It's going that way, but choose, make a choice. The first thing is to, is to make the choice. Uh, second thing I want to say, I haven't got the scriptures, the scriptures out there, but I'll, I'll quote the scripture there. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and, and, and by the confession of your mouth. I mean, confession of your mouth. Uh, and I want to make this statement. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and, and, and by the confession of your mouth. Amen. I want to say to you, when you confess, the second thing is confession. When you confess, the blood goes to work. When you confess God's word, God's faithfulness, God's character, God's nature, the blood goes to work. Amen. So the blood has already been shed. We know that the, the blood has been shed. It is there. But as you begin to begin to confess, and I believe we need to begin to be, be confessors. What are you confessing? What do you talk about? How bad it is, or how wicked, or how the devil, you know, the, the devil is mightily at work in the world. If you confess his words, then his work will manifest. Amen. And uh, things will, will, will we, we, we empower it. Amen. Listen, hear me this one. Confession always empowers the thing that you're confessing. If you're confessing faith, it will empower faith. If you confess doubt, it will em empower doubt. If you confess fear, it will empower fear. Whatever you confess will empower. You give it empower. When it empower. When it is empowered, it will also get you. Hallelujah. So whatever you, you are speaking, it will not only affect the other person that is listening to you, but it will also affect you that uh, you feel weak. You, I tell you what, you feel fearful. You feel timid. You feel uncertain. You feel double-minded. You feel you can't take a step of faith. You feel that you're locked in, in your mind already, amen? Uh, and you're locked down. You feel because your confession will cause that reality to set in your own life. And therefore, we really, in this season of COVID, we really need to consider what is it that we are confessing. We need to confess, uh, uh, the Bible says, confess the blood of the Lamb and the word of His testimony. Testify. Testify of God. What is the word of His testimony? Testify of His goodness. Testify of His power. Testify what Christ has done. Testify what Christ is doing. Testify of God's plan and purpose in the world. Hallelujah. Testify of the power of Christ. You need to testify and begin to speak. And you need to confess it out of your mouth. Amen. You got, God is speaking. Uh, the, the, the Christian, and maybe I'll just touch on that right now. Confession and meditation. What is meditation? Meditation, most of the time they say is that meditation, you think and you ruminate in your mind about God, about the Word of God, and it is an a, 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 a internal thing. Amen? It's internal. Amen? True 
true meditation is a, is also confession. Is actually confession true? Because the the people who 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 conf, they, 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 confession is uh, meditation is confessing with your mouth uh, in a soft, slow, inaudible manner. But uh, hear me well. Words are being spoken. It's being spoken, but it's not audible. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I want to explain that a little bit clearly. So confession is not really, and sometimes you know, when you read the Bible, you think and reflect on it, and I, I do that, I do that confession, but there's another confession, they, they, they speak of the goodness. You know, they, they used to have a thing that they, they recite, amen? Confession is actually reciting as well, amen? And they recite the, the word of God, but in an audible, not in an audible manner. But, I'm speaking this, but it is still being spoken. It's being spoken, but it's not being heard. Hallelujah! Anybody, any questions? Yes. It's being, which means it's being spoken in a, in a very soft way. Quite, and, and there's some things, and, and uh, uh, you just need to, and at the other time, you know, confess the word of God strongly. Amen? We declare, we speak, you know. Uh, the, the, that is declaration prayer. That is, we, we declare the word of God, you know, strongly. Uh, and it, it goes out. But meditation is when you speak the word inward. Hallelujah. But he's speaking, still speaking the word. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, the, 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 the Bible says meditation is chewing the cud. I don't know how many of you are aware of that, chewing the cud. Yes. Like when I, when I, uh, but it, it, with the mouth, and it's chewing over the word of God, but he's doing it in a, in a slow, soft manner. Yeah, eating of the word of God. Amen. Next one, I want to say is that, uh, confess the third, that, that this is the this thing you need to, that the scripture we can that you're kept by the power of God in this time of COVID. You need to know that God is the one who is keeping you, and He can keep you from COVID yes. and from the effect of COVID. So uh, sometimes we feel that uh, we feel that we are at uh, we feel that. Uh, we are overcome or we feel that the enemy is... Uh, no, God is a keeping God. He is keeping you. He is protecting you. He is preserving you. He is keeping you from the evil one. God keeps you. Every single one of you, He is your keeping God. Hallelujah. He is your keeping. We are kept by the power of God. And we need to be able to... You need to know that. Amen. What's my confidence? My confidence is not I do all this so many different things, uh, you know, I do what I've got to do, but I know ultimately my God is keeping me. He watches over Israel, neither sleeps nor slumber. Hallelujah. God is keeping you. You need to have that confidence. If you don't have that confidence, you'll be assaulted, you'll be assailed by all the problems and by all the news, and you feel fearful because you feel that I, I it is so big, it's so strong, I can't keep myself, oh, you know. No, you're kept by the power of God. Amen. You are kept. God is God is your keeping God. He's well able to keep you in all circumstances, all situations. Even in the season, He's able to keep you. Hallelujah. Next thing you need to know, God can keep your job. God can keep your income. Hallelujah. God can keep your health. God can keep everything in your life that needs to be kept. He is a keeping God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, he not only protects, he keeps, hallelujah, I'm kept by the power of God. I'm kept, I'm a kept person, hallelujah. I'm in his hands, yeah. he is watching over me. He is responsible for me. He is, uh, his angels camp around me. His Holy Spirit is indwelling within me. Hallelujah, I am kept, God is keeping me. It's all well with my soul. It's all well because I'm a kept man, hallelujah. I'm kept by the power of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
You need to you need to really believe that because fear will come, but you say you just need to now these things we need to remind ourselves and say, and can Lord I thank you. Lord I thank you when you, when we fear so whatever happens to you, say Lord I thank you that you are you you're delivering me from all the the, the, the devices of the evil one. I thank you, God. Lord, uh, that uh, uh, you're keeping me. Uh, uh, you know, and, and the Bible says that be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. So I want to say that be strong. So I uh, started again by saying that, you know, uh, uh, we need a strong spirit. We need to be strong. Not believe, listen to me, believing is here. Believing is in the soul. Hear me well. Believing is in the soul and in the mind. Strength is in the spirit. It's right here in the spirit. So, and, and, and uh, here Paul is saying, be strong in the Lord. Be strong. Who, who makes the decision? You make the decision. Lord, I choose to be strong. And God's strength will strengthen you. And, 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 and you just need to do that. Next one I, I just want to say that I just want to wrap it up today is to uh, claim God in this season, especially claim God's promise for your life. Mm -hmm. It's all there. You got to claim it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It's on the shelf. You got to take it down from the shelf. If you leave it in the shelf, it will be on the shelf. But if you are willing to exert some energy, get a stool. Hallelujah. If you're not tall enough, some of us may spiritually need a bit of a a ladder, hallelujah. Get that ladder. Anyway, get it. Go up the shelf and get it. What is it that you need? And the Bible says, uh, uh, claim Psalm 91, especially during this COVID season, you know, of God's protection and God's promise to you. Amen. A thousand will fall by your side and ten thousand by the other, but it shall not come nigh thee. Your, 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 the strength of your spirit and the spirit of faith within you will keep the enemy at bay. It's what you do. Sometimes you say, God, no, it's not God. If we just claim, speak that over your life, speak 91 over your life, declare it, claim every promise that is in that chapter. And say, Lord, I thank you, my God, that you're empowering me. Lord, I thank you, God, that your word says that it, uh, no, no, no plague shall come near my life. Lord, I claim that and I thank you, my God, that you're strengthening me by your spirit. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you, God, that your promise is yes and amen. Is a promise yes and amen during COVID season? I think it's especially more during COVID season because this is the season where a thousand is fallen at your right and ten thousand at your right hand. If ever COVID, uh, uh, Psalms 91 is needed, it is today. You need to, I always tell that, uh, and, 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 and I want to say, this is what God, God's promises are like bricks, okay? Hear that. God's promises are like bricks. You'll be, you're given a lot of bricks. The bricks are all the God has. In the natural, the, the, the builder takes up the brick and he begins to build. Amen? He builds a wall, wall like this. Amen? He builds four walls. When you build the four walls outside, there may be rain, there may be storm, there may be a big gust of wind. Everything is flowing away. But a person has, has, has built a wall like in a house or whatever it is, and then he can sit inside. The wind is still howling and blowing, the rain might still be there, everything is there, but he is not touched by it because he's built himself a house and he's staying inside. The elements are all going on the outside, but it does not touch him. Amen? Natural, that's in the end. In the spiritual, it's just the same. God's promises are the bricks. You are the brick layer. And God wants you to take brick by brick, one day at a time maybe, and begin to build whatever it is that you need to be built around it. Whether it be over the area of finance, whether it be the area of health, whether it be the area of relationship, whether it be the area of spiritual growth, you need to take the brick and you begin to build it. And as you begin to build it, God will secure you. Amen? Amen. 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 When you build the brick, build the house, Build that surrounding them. And, uh, and so Psalms 91 is uh, the promises. You got to claim it and you need to, 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 to uh, 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 believe God for that for, for your life. The last one, and, and we, uh, the last one, the, I believe this is the most important. Everything is important, but this is just important. Pray the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Hallelujah. How many will say yes to that and yes and amen? Look at all the hands going up. I pray. The only thing in, in our churches, I know even like Larry's testimony and all that, and many other testimonies similar to that, as, as people begin to, what, what, what has happened is as people begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, they begin to build up their most holy faith. Now they're becoming strong in spirit. Now the enemy's power over their life, uh, it may be there, but it's not affecting them. Amen. Now they're becoming more than conquerors. Amen. Now they're overcoming. I want to say to you the last thing, and, and, and I believe the most important thing is to, to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Take this time to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray. One definitely, a person who prays in the Holy Ghost, he will be. There's no if, buts, or maybes about this thing. If you pray, then he ask. You know, but when, when, I, when I spoke to Larry, and I was very impressed, you know, very impressed with his testimony and what God has done. And, and I thought that, uh, wow, this guy, he must really be praying about three, four hours a day in tongues or something like that. So I asked Larry, Larry, tell me, man, how long do you pray in tongues every day? Uh, you know, like he narrated. He said he only prays half an hour around that. Hi, half an hour. God gave him 24 hours, and he gave half, half an hour to the Holy Ghost. And uh, you know, he's been a Christian for, he received the Holy Ghost uh, 47 years ago. Amen. Am I right, Larry, around that? 47. Yeah, 40, 50, 50, oh, 57. 50 years ago, he received the Holy Ghost. Uh, but now, he is using the gift that God has given, and, 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 and things are beginning to change because it is, uh, he's building himself up, he's being strengthened in the Holy Ghost, things are. I want to say to you, I'm sharing this, uh, uh, okay, I, I want to end with this. Uh, praying the Holy Ghost will first and foremost build your faith, so though, even though there's negative around you, you do not, are not affected. Okay, I'll tell you this. If you are affected by the news that is around you, your spirit may be strong, but it's not strong enough. Mm -hmm. Amen? Maybe I'm not saying your spirit, but uh, uh, it may be strong, but when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you know, uh, it will make your spirit strong. When your spirit becomes strong, then you can become an overcomer. I mean, God will help you. And uh, first one, I want you to say, say that, really encourage you, uh, those of you in our churches, but you pray. I was expecting the man to say three hours a day. He prayed it on three hours a day. He said, no, I pray for 30 minutes. But he prayed it in the prescribed way, hallelujah. Uh, he prayed loudly, prayed strongly, and uh, gave himself that. And uh, you know, uh, something is happening in his life, and he's believing for more, a whole lot of things. So I just encourage you, I, I'm saying this to you, you need to be strong. It's not what you believe, let me tell you this again, it's not just what you believe, it's how strong you are in a, in a man, in a spirit, I, your strength, you know, it's strength. It's going to take strength to overcome these tough times, strength, inner strength, inner fortitude, spirit of God, keeping you. Hallelujah. You're kept by, you pray in the Holy Ghost, you're kept by the power of God. How does God keep you? He keeps you by the anointing. How does the anointing come? Anointing comes when it flows out of your belly. How does it, it flow out of your belly, the anointing? When you pray in the Holy Ghost, the anointing flows out of your belly. And when it flows out of your belly, it'll touch every area of your life. It'll touch your mind, it'll touch your soul, it'll touch your spirit, it'll touch your body, it'll touch your emotion, it'll touch and, and what does it do? That anointing does one thing. It breaks the yoke. So whatever yoke that is around, whatever limitation that the devil has put around you, it will come and pull down all the strongholds. And suddenly you're becoming free. Why are you becoming free? Because all those hindrances, the blockages, the limitations, the devil's work is being busted. And now you can grow out of that pot. You can become a bigger person. You can experience a destiny and experience the strength of God and begin to have a, 
a peace, joy, love, and, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. It is all locked up in your belly. It just needs to be released through your mouth. And as you begin to pray, God will make you strong. Strength. You know, I, I've been in ministry for 30 years. I've, been, I've done some very difficult, been through some very difficult times. And people sometimes wonder at me. Some, some situation I've gone through, you know, people would have collapsed. <laughs> I've been through some very challenging, difficult, painful. But all I've done during this whole period is just to pray the Holy Ghost. Amen. My, my mind, my emotion, everything is, 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 is dropping, but my spirit, you know, as I prayed in the Holy Ghost, my spirit kept it strong like that. And it helped me to go through all the troubles that I've been through. Amen. Uh, I've never even talked to you about my troubles. I don't, but there's some troubles that I have, I've had in the past. But the Holy Ghost gave me a breakthrough because my spirit was able to stand in the midst of it. That's the strength in it. Hallelujah. Really encourage you, church, you know. Uh, we have a revelation of praying in the Holy Ghost. I pray that you'll pray in the Holy Ghost. You, do, you will definitely break through because the anointing of God in your life, that will break through. Not you, but the anointing of God. As it comes out of you, it will help you to break through, to come into liberty, into freedom, into victory, into, into the very presence of God. And uh, then you enjoy the abundant life. I, I pray that you do that. Finally, I just want to say with regard to COVID, and, and we are winding it up now, sermon is over, but uh, uh, for those, uh, I, I've spoken to three people, and for those who have taken the injection, I got one person in Indonesia, two person, friends of mine in Malaysia, two, uh, 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 yeah, three people, uh, three people. I, I just want to say to you, they, they are committed Christians, you know, and uh, they do not know what we know. Now, some of us know something more. Hi. Some of us know something small, amen. Uh, others don't know, but God is not dependent upon what we know. Uh, but uh, uh, they, they, they say that they, they are very strong, praying, fervent, God-loving Christians. And, and in Malaysia, you know, they just told you got to take take the injection, so they took the injection, and uh, they said that uh, uh, it has been good with them. Amen? And I'll tell you why. It is good with them. And, and I want to share this for those who got it. Uh, you know, you, uh, you dictate, do what your conscience dictates about the injection, okay? About the vaccination, your conscience. Whatever your conscience says, you do it. But second thing I just want to share, because I believe I need to share this, is that, that the spirit Greater is he who is in me than the spirit that is in the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You, you just, that, that is what faith is. How are we kept? We are kept by the power of God. Amen. You do what your conscience dictates you to you, The conscience dictates for you to take it, take it. If the conscience does not dictate to you, not take it. You do whatever you want to do. All of us, you know. But I want to say to you that God is still able to keep you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. Just kept and uh, 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 and uh, these three people are, and, and uh, they are personal friends of mine and I know them for 20 years. Uh, one is, uh, two of them are ministers, one is a very committed Christian and he said he has taken it and uh, he just, and he told me that before, so here it is, he said before he went for the injection he prayed, committed to God say God and he said this and I'll tell you that he said Lord if there be any poison in it anything in it Lord nullify it God cancel it Lord make it uh, of, uh, and Lord I, I'm just doing what I have to do Lord God and uh, I'm trusting you and and, 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 and and he said he prayed over it you know prayed over the whole thing prayed that day he said God I am trusting you to keep me Amen. hallelujah I'm trusting you, you know and so whatever you do, whenever you do it, uh, uh, if you have a conviction not to take it, don't take it. If you have a, and you feel the light to take it, take it, you know. Uh, and and one, one of the guys prayed, how did you take it? So he told me, so I'm just, and, and I believe, and I do the, take the same principle. So this application, he said that uh, I prayed to the Lord. I prayed to him, Lord, whether I should 
take COVID, this injection or not. And Lord, if you, if you don't want me to take it, Lord, put it in my heart so that I won't take it, you know. Because he's been hearing side, from both sides of the story, you know. And, uh, but, and uh, then he told me that he prayed and, and he said that, you know, the Lord did not speak anything to me with the God. So I went and took it, amen. And then he said he just pray over it and said that. So I just want to give that as an option for you all because uh, uh, I, I, and, I, and, I, and I believe, my personal belief, I don't want you to, every man and woman need to be led by the Spirit of God and check it, check with the Holy Ghost. Check with the big boss. Amen. See what he has got to say. Amen. And, and do it accordingly. But whatever it is, whatever you take or you don't take, just know that you're kept by the power of God. Amen. You really need to, you need to be strong in the spirit. Hallelujah. Strong in the spirit and you should not fear. Amen. Fear. And I'll tell you why. Fear will low, uh, fear will low, uh, uh, will, will pull, pull, fear will pull the protection over your life down. Fear. It will pull it down. So don't fear. So how do you not fear? We prayed up we the Holy Ghost. Faith is up. Fear is down here. Amen. If you're not built up, then fear is up. And then you do what fear dictates to you to do. Amen? Second thing I just want to finish by praying in the Holy Ghost will build up your immune system. I want you to do that. Please. We need it today more than ever. More than ever. You need to be prayed up because COVID-19 hits your immune system. When the immune system is weak, you know, it gets in. The immune system, that is why they say people in the, in the uh, uh, retirement villages, the immune system is low, so COVID-19 gets them. But for young children and all that, their immune system is high. It does not get them. It's all about your immune system. And if you pray sufficiently, if you pray and you're strong in the spirit, your immune system is built up, it's strong. So COVID comes, comes with its punch, and God put, you can't get through. Hallelujah. It hits, but it goes down. He hits, there's a wall, a wall of protection around your life. Hallelujah. Supernatural, you know. Praying in the Holy Ghost increases your immune system by 40%. 40%. Proven scientifically, 40%. One of the antidote against COVID is having a strong immune system. And I pray that you have that. Father, I pray, Lord, that each and every person that are seated here tonight, Lord, Father, this morning, Father, I pray that you'll bless them, Father, that uh, you'll empower them by your Spirit of God, Lord, that you'll be strong in the Lord and in the power of His mind. I pray, God, that you will, that you will you'll keep them. Lord, we declare, we pray today, that they'll be kept by the power of God and by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, my God, Lord, that uh, you watch over your sheep, Lord, and we thank you that all is well with our soul. Praise and thank you. And we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.